We're back with the RV Rundown, and this is the 2023 Alliance Valor 36V11. I want to get going right here in the living room kitchen area of the 36 V11. I think it's a really great use of space. Alliance has done some things that are traditional in the toy hauler market, like things I've seen before, but also a lot of things that are really clever and really useful to the end owner of this vehicle. Now at just under 40 feet total length, this is the smallest toy hauler that Alliance is currently making in a fifth wheel but they've used the space incredibly well. By sticking the TV and entertainment system on a slight angle and giving us all of the storage in the form of cabinetry around it, we are right across from a gigantic sofa which can seat pretty much the whole family and still have a great view of the TV. I like that a lot. Sometimes we see a dining table in here and I do think that that's kind of lost on a lot of people because they can use the table in the garage that we'll get to later for dining. Now, they've put 12 volts everywhere in here. They have what they call the masters of 12 volt system, which means if it's a daily use item that you can think of, it's probably tied to it. And that even includes the recliners that are here on the sofa. I love other things that they've done, like the big atrium windows here. They give us great views of the patio side of our campsite, so that if you're sitting in here cooking or making a meal or, you know, just hanging out, you're going to be able to check out your campground views around you. Speaking, going back to that entertainment center, they've given us a big Jensen HD TV. It's on a swing arm mount so it can pull out and move around a little bit if we want to re-angle it. And we've got a JBL sound system that's tied to that. That's Bluetooth as well so you can hook up to it with your phone and just play your tunes. Using JBL is a really cool thing. It's a great sound system and it's a brand name that people really like. Down low, we have a gigantic electric fireplace that's going to spit out a fair amount of heat in the winter and help offset your gas. So that's a very nice thing to have. Now this does have a really powerful 40,000 BTU heater on board and they've done other cool things like insulate the garage floor. Now, again, more stuff that we'll get to later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the kitchen. One thing I love that Alliance does is there's no way that you're gonna stub your toe on the slide in the kitchen. It's flush floor, so you walk right up to the stove, not a problem. You have plenty of space to prep here in the form of solid surface countertops with sink covers that can drain down into that single basin stainless steel sink. We have a three burner stove top with a glass cover. That's gonna help us just give more prep space. Big oven down beneath, and they put a pretty sizable drawer down there as well. Now up top, we have a Greystone convection microwave oven. So not only can we make biscuits down low, we can make them up high too. So biscuits and gravy and bacon on one of those big trips is gonna be an option. And there's lots of storage in this kitchen as well. They've done things like giving us little appliance garage spaces. What I mean by that is that we have plugs on the wall and spaces where we can hook up like a toaster or a coffee maker. Lots of shelving and cabinetry up high and down low. There's even a pantry over here that opens up and is pretty spacious inside. I like that. And again, going back to that whole appliance garage idea or being able to set up appliances, we have another countertop over here that's solid surface and there's a plug hiding up on the underside of this cabinet. Again, storage, storage, storage is everywhere. We've got storage up high, drawers down low, cabinetry as well. And we've even got an Everchill refrigerator that's huge. This thing is a 17 cubic foot 
12 volt refrigerator. Now this is tied into the inverter system and because this has a 100 amp hour lithium battery and two gigantic solar panels on the roof, we're going to be able to run a whole lot of stuff on battery power alone, which means that you can boondock longer. Now if you do start to run low on that lithium juice, you can cut on your generator because we've optioned this one in with a 5500 Onan quiet gas generators. So that's going to power this whole thing, including the three air conditioners that are up on the roof. The island has another cool little secret hiding in it. We have a flip up tabletop here and Alliance does include two stools so that we have a little bit of like a breakfast bar situation going on. It just gives us more space. Again, a spot to sit down and eat. Let's say you have six people in here, which you could easily host. You could have four people sitting at the back table eating and two people sitting here. Everybody's got space to do their thing. Heading up to the top deck, we notice that at the base of the stairs, there's a cool little spot where we can kick our shoes off and toss them in there before we you know, come into the camper and get settled in. Our bathroom up here, our main bathroom I should say, is up here as well. We have a good amount of counter space in here. I've noticed that they've gone away with the epoxy countertops in these. I feel like they were doing that a few years ago. Maybe I'm wrong, you guys can correct me in the comments. I know they were definitely doing it in some of the paradigms, but they've gone with something a little lighter, a little different in here. Small stainless steel sink, plenty of storage though. We've got a medicine cabinet up high, some spots for towels and other things over here. And then there's some little shelving down low. We've got a soft clothes high rise toilet and a great shower enclosure with a skylight up above. Got that glass sliding door that's going to clean up really easily. The bedroom features a king bed from Serta. I love this. It's backed up to a padded headboard. So sitting up in the evening and watching TV is going to be easy to do. We've got windows all the way around it so that if you do have really great weather, we can open that up. We can catch a cross breeze in here and just kind of experience the nice cool air that's outside. I mentioned earlier that this has three airs. One of them's right here in the bedroom. The other's in the main living room kitchen area and the third is in the garage. They're all direct dump and they're super quiet and high efficiency. So on 30 amp service, we can absolutely run two of them and on 50, we can run all three. That's pretty cool. The TV that's in the bedroom is a 12 volt TV, so it can run off of that inverter in the 12 volt system. It's kind of in a great position sitting directly across from the bed. Directly below it, we have a nice three drawer chest of drawer. And again, just taking advantage of every bit of space that we can, they have that nice little lift up hidden storage space there. Behind me, we got a pretty decent sized closet. It opens a couple of ways. So we open this way where we can see we've got a big hanging rack. We've got power in here. There's even a spot to hook up a washer dryer. Now they've done something neat in this toy hauler. They've given us the option to also put a washer dryer in the garage. So that's kind of a, an awesome idea in the sense that we don't have to have extra pin weight up here if we choose not to, but it does take away from your garage space. So thus, whether you want the washer dryer or not and where you want to put it, at least we have options and we can pick what we're going to do there. On the other sides of the closet door, we've got more hanging space. You can see over here it's the same on the other side. And of course, there's also some storage up under the bed. So if I give this a lift, it's strut assisted, and you can see that there's a nice large space there for keeping blankets and other odds and ends that you may want to travel with. Pretty classic design, pretty standard front bedroom, but I will mention the other thing that's neat about this is that there's nowhere that I step up. It's a flat deck all the way across, and at six foot three, I can walk all the way up to the closet, not a problem. Now, as we head down the stairs, I want to do something real quick. So right across from our entry door, we have our primary control panel. Now, one of the things Alliance is kind of known for 
is having everything on its own physical switch. They don't have any little touch pads or, or apps or anything that run things in and out. So you get that practicality of hitting a switch and watching something happen. Now, in this control panel, we have access to all of our scare lights, our interior lights, our slides and awnings. We can even turn our generator on and off from here. And most of the lights in here have dimmers on them as well, which is a very nice feature. Now, I want to run the slides in real quick just to see what's accessible. Let's do it. There it is. All right. So with all the slides closed, you can see we can come up into our front door. I do have access to this nice little, uh, that little appliance space that we talked about before in the cabinetry that's up high. I can get into my sink, but it's tight. I'm definitely not really getting into this refrigerator, anything over there. I'm not getting into that pantry door. Now the garage has its own access door, so I can definitely get in the garage, and I can certainly get into the main bathroom up here. So showering or using the bathroom on a quick pit stop, that's not gonna be a problem. I could climb into the bed with the slide in and use it, uh, but you're definitely, you know, kind of stepping over something or climbing over someone if there's two people in the bed. So overall, it is good for a quick pit stop, but there's a lot of things that are definitely unaccessible here. Let's open the slides back up and make our way back to the garage. Okay, everything's back opened up. One of the things I do like that Alliance does is with their cabinetry, they do things like hidden hinges and soft closed drawers. It just gives it a very residential feel. And if you ever had to work on this thing, they've color coded all of their wiring and they give you that color code chart just to make it easier to know what you're working on. Now, as we make our way back to the garage, I want you to notice that they're just, again, using all the dead space that they can. They've given us a loft up high so we could sleep potentially one person up there or a couple of small kids. There is a ladder that comes with this that hooks right up and over to allow you to get up and down from there with ease. The garage here is pretty cool. I mean, I've been in a lot of toy haulers, so it's not incredibly different from a lot of them on the market, but they do some things that I really like. The airline track running down the center and the sides is going to give us a great way to tie things down. There's lots of custom accessories you can get to put down in there. We've got a TV up high. This is a 12 volt TV, so it's gonna operate off of the battery system if needs be. When I was up in the bedroom earlier, I was talking about how we have the option to hook up a washer dryer here in the garage. It would just simply sit between the two doors there. And that other door is a half bath. So anyone that may be staying with you, whether they're in that loft up high or in the Happy Jack bed system that we're about to take a look at, they've got a spot to use the restroom without taking up that upper deck restroom. We've got vents for our combustion engines, high and low on either side, LED lights back here. All of the shades in here are MCD roller shades. I love those a lot. They're very classy and they operate pretty easily and block out a whole lot of light. Balances are nice as well. They're just a simple touch that keeps it classy in here. We've got storage on the other side of our TV and it's got little bungee netting just to keep things like helmets and writing material, you know, whatever you might happen to need back here in your garage. Now, this is equipped with the Happy Jack bed system that's up above us. Now, this is something we see pretty commonly in most toy haulers. They've kind of gotten a grip on that market. It's a great use of space in a garage to expand it and make it multi-purpose and make it useful to you. Now, what it is is we have two layers here that run up and down on this track system. The bottom layer is either two sofas that face each other that we can slide a table in between. The backs of those sofas can lay down and become a bed, or we can drop down both layers and have what's essentially close to a queen over queen bunk bed system here. 
This can also be removed if you just need the extra height. It's pretty easy to unpin it and pull it on out. And then that would leave us with just the top bunk or you could remove both of them if you need the extra space all the way up. I've even talked to guys that turn this into home gyms, home offices. We sold one toy hauler to a fella that put a Bowflex back here. So think about that. There's lots of ways that you could utilize this garage space. Let's check out the patio. The eight foot back door doubles as both our ramp to get to our garage and our patio. It's on the zero G system, so it raises up and lowers out with ease. As a matter of fact, you kind of have to pull down on it just to get it to open up. There's an emergency access from the inside that will unlock it. Otherwise, it's keyed from the outside to get it to open up. We have these nice three season patio doors which have glass inserts as well as screen separating the garage from the back patio which means you can trap some hot air and cool air in there if you choose to. Notice that they've given us a Thule awning up high and by placing our scare lights up under it, it means that we can have this awning out while loading our toys in so long as they fit clearance wise. The deck itself is pretty well equipped. They've given us this nice gate and fence system around it that's gonna keep toddlers and dogs in. It does have a space that actually closes up here to prevent us from going out and down the stairs that are provided with this as well. And they say that this ramp is weather resistant, which means a little bit of rain is definitely not going to hurt it. I do like that when you're fully set up with the patio out and the stairs in place, we do have one more ingress egress point to the camper. That's kind of nice if you ask me. Now on the patio side, we have a, another couple of cool things going on. The 36V11 has two electric awnings, one back here over the garage entry door and another that spans over our main entry door. And they've included some other cool stuff. What looks like a little add-on toolbox in the skirting is actually a compressor so we can fill our tires with air, air things up, air things down. If you're in the off-roading community, this can be super helpful. Or even if we just have to replace a tire on your vehicle, the tow vehicle or the camper itself, that air compressor, I can see using it for all sorts of different things. Again, this has multiple entries, nice big grab handles. In the back here, they have the traditional fold out stairs. So that's kind of interesting. And this is equipped with six point hydraulic level up. It's strong enough to fully lift one side of the camper completely off the ground. There's outside speakers and we've even got outside power out here. So we have the ability to hook up a TV should you choose to. So entertainment outside is not really going to be a problem. At our main entry door, we have the Lippert solid steps going up and in. Again, nice big grab handle, Solera electric awning. Both of these awnings are LED lit. And if that wasn't enough, they put scare lights all the way around this camper, really just lighting the whole thing up. Another thing I like that they've done is incorporating a spray port right here by the main entry door. If you're using this as a toy hauler for like off-road vehicles or you know your four-wheeler or dirt bikes, you're bound to be getting muddy. Having your spray port hooked up and being able to hose off dirty things right before you go inside is A-OK -okay by me. Now our main pass-through storage has these cool slam latches, insulated baggage doors, and a pretty decent sized pass through. Notice how it's dipped to wrap around the frame. It gives us some extra space here and we do have the ability to run cordage down through here as we have our cable out and some power for a TV if we chose to hook one up. You can see all of the aluminum framing and the decking up there and just the quality of build that you're getting. This is equipped with what I like to call 
a saddlebag style LP storage. So we have one here and on the other side of the RV, there's another setup just like this. So nice big tanks that are gonna keep you out for long periods of time. Speaking of big tanks, I don't think I mentioned it inside, but this thing's equipped with nearly 100 gallon black, gray, and fresh tanks. At the very front, we've got a couple of other cool things going on. At the bottom, you can see that we've got our Cummins Onan Quiet Gas 5500 generator. This thing, like I was saying inside, is gonna be powerful enough to really keep the whole camper up and running. There's a separate tank for that in the back. We're gonna look at that in just a second. And then up top, we have a few things. There's some more storage. You can see our Renogy inverter over there, or charge controller, I should say. We've got that spray port hose, which is kind of cool. That's just hiding in here. Access to our hydraulic pump. And then down below that, we have our battery compartment, where right now we've got that one lithium battery hooked up. Another thing I want to point out is our Kurt Rotaflex pin box. So the Kurt Rotaflex pin box is kind of cool because it's got an escutcheon plate built into it, and that's going to help with the chucking going down the road. There's also load lights here, and of course, that nice big molded front cap that Alliance has that looks so great going down the road. Pushing over to the off door or the driver's side of the vehicle, right here at the front, we have the controls for our level up system. I like this placement. It's easy to get to and operate. You hop out of the driver's side and you're gonna be able to lift this thing up and down off the hitch or just auto level the whole camper by pressing one button. Kind of cool. We talked about saddlebag storage for the propane. Well, this is it on the other side. Simple enough. Down low, you'll notice that we do have the exhaust for our generator. And then the other side of our pass-through storage has our all-in-one wet bay. So everything we need is right here for switching over from city fill to tank fill, for winterization, for taking an outside shower. All of our tank pools are right here as well. And of course, there's a threaded slot for bringing stuff up in there. There's even a quick access panel for getting into the back side of this for any maintenance purposes. I really like the design of this, it's well laid out. We have access to our water heater here as well. And as we push towards the back, I wanna point out a couple of things. One is that we have a fuel station on board here. So this, this is danger, no smoking. All right, so as you can see, we have a full on fuel pump here. This is great because we have two fuel tanks on board. One of the fuel tanks is going to fill up our generator and power it. The other is going to be running straight to this. Now, what's neat about that is we can fuel our toys or if we're running low on fuel in the generator tank, we can literally pump straight to it if we want to. Kind of cool. This little door right here under the folding ladder has our fuel dispensing emergency shutoff switch, so that's gonna cut it on and off. And of course, because this is a toy hauler and we've got the ramp in the back, our ladder folds down off of the sidewall instead of being off of the back. So, kind of a neat setup. This is on a little hinge platform with some pins that lock it into place. And when you're going down the road, this just simply folds up and into place flat against the side of the camper. Our main power is right here at the very back, and this is a 50 amp service camper with a nice big shoreline that we've got connected up to our campsite. There's so many features on the Alliance Valor that it's hard to just condense them all into a short little under 20 minute video. There's things I didn't talk about, like the running gear, like how they've reinforced some of the brackets. I don't even think I mentioned that this thing has a PVC roof. There's just a lot because Alliance is really customer driven and they're listening to the market and adapting their product as they're building them to their customers' needs. And you can really see it in a toy hauler like this one. 
is certainly worth checking out for yourself in person if you're on the market for a new RV. Their paradigms, their valors, even their all-access avenues are all built as high-quality fifth wheels and just travel trailers that are certainly invading the marketplace and really changing up the way that we look at RVing. I'm proud to have these things on the lot at Southern RV. I think they're super cool fifth wheels and it's certainly worth checking out in person. So drop on by Southern RV in McDonough, Georgia to see this Valor for yourself. If you like our content, please subscribe. We're putting out new stuff weekly. And until next time, happy camping. Thank you.